grandfather gave me this lovely old axe last year and the handle it had on it was rotted so I made a new one. It was the first one I ever made so I didn't do a very good job so today we're going to see if we can make a new one. So we're going to head away upstairs and see do we have a suitable piece of ash. Between slabs of oak and bits of the boat this is a total mess but I know I have the perfect piece and I think this is it. I set this piece aside a while back because I knew the grain running like this was perfect for an axe handle so today we get to use it. I'm sharpening a pencil here and Lucy is trying to eat the shavings. Would you go away? Shoo, began. I hung on to the original for this exact purpose of just tracing it out. Now for the fun part. I'm not sure why they call them coping saws, but I'd imagine it's something to do with how hard they are to use and how often they break. Once we have the shape of it cut out, I'm using the rip cut saw here to kind of make it thinner on the top than it is on the bottom. With that all done, the next step is to throw it into the vise real quick grab our spoke shave and just round out the handles. I'm also doing a lot of my shaving with some 60 grit sandpaper here. I put on the last one so bad that I'm able to knock it out slowly with the hammer. There we go, free at last. I think I have the two pieces ready to go and we're just gonna line them up, squish them into place then and then let inertia put it the rest of the way through. So we have it the whole way through now, our next step is to just widen the slit up on top of it. Grab our wedge and some glue, and then introduce them to each other. I think I have it lined up right, so it's gonna take the hammer there and drive it through. A much easier job with the coping saw is just cutting off the excess here from that wedge. The handle is nearly ready to go. The next thing we're gonna do is strike a match here and get this blowtorch going. And what we're gonna do is char the ash a small bit. We're not gonna get it entirely black, like a hammer I recently did, but I think if we just make it a bit darker, like you can already see it's kinda of going there, it might look a bit nicer than just completely white ash. So I think that turned out fairly good. Now what I'm gonna do next is just take some fairly high grit sandpaper and give it a nice smooth finish and see where it takes us. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. And the next step is of course, a bit of linseed oil and wow. That is working magic. It's still hot as well, so it's being soaked right into the wood. Well, it's looking pretty good, but while we're at it, we might as well put a bit of a sharp red on it. Now, I'd never be one to shy away from an excuse to waste some WD-40, so we'll lube up the diamond stone and see what we can put on it. And there we have it, lads. If I keep this handle regularly oiled, it should see me out, and hopefully it'll get passed down onto another generation, please God. But let this video show, lads, you probably have your own family tools that you can restore and give a new life to. Like, this is an old hand-forged um, uh, axe head, so it'll be much higher quality than any of the stuff you could get today, and there's still a lot of meat left on that, so hopefully now there might be a century or two left for it. Good luck.